two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. What's on tap podcast returns, and I am your host, Stefan. I'm Matthias. And we are here to review some beers. As we do. Yep. Uh, we are not in a bar this time. We are at my house. And we have a couple of beers we're very excited about. We oh, felt, got two of them. Uh, hence a couple of beers. Uh, a couple. <laughs> One mean, couple. Meaning two. Um, mm-hmm. It wouldn't be a triad or a... Quintuplet. That would be five. Yes, it would. Um, but it is just a couple. It is a couple. Uh, per our usual agreement of trying two beers per episode. <laughs> So we are staying right on track with that. No you're surprise dragging there. this out way too long. Well, you're the one that wanted to specify what a couple meant. So. There we go. All right. So. All right. This episode, we have uh, a local beer and a very unlocal beer. Right. Uh, both, both, of them, both of these were available as System Belagget. Yes. So we recently. felt they were worth uh, mentioning. They both sold out really quickly. The first is the Boulevard Smokestack Series Collaboration number six. Which is a joint collab between Boulevard uh, uh, Firestone Walker Brewing and Firestone Walker. And also, uh, uh, I think, wasn't it? No, it was only Firestone Walker and Boulevard. Right. Yeah. So it is an Imperial Stout X Tart Cherry Bourbon Barrel Quad Sticky Monkey and Velvet Merkin. Yes. Uh, oh, true. So they only, they, the thing is, they used two different beers from uh, Firestone Walker. Oh, there we go. Jesus. <laughs> the beer actually opened itself. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, the, the cork just popped. That was kind of a surprise. Did not expect that. Yeah. Um, and we got to get it. All right. <laughs> Let's see if you can find the cork on the. On the uh, real quick. Dog has it. Oh, well, we got to get it from the dog. Hold on one second. We got to put a pause and we got to we got to get a cork from a dog. Yeah. Um, because that would be bad otherwise. Okay, we're back. So we got the, we got the cork from the dog, and the dog is very excited or sad. I can't really tell which. It's it just it's, 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 it's expecting something to happen next. <laughs> All right. And so the other beer we have is a joint collab between uh, Jester King Brewing and Brickriet. Yep. And <laughs> yep. Uh, so we look forward to that one as well. It's the local king. Um, yeah, called Local King. So that should be should be very interesting. So do you want to do the stout first or the local king first? Well, since the stout already opened itself, maybe well, we should it's, just... Well, uh, it's kind of calm. Until, let's pour well, it up. Well, it's, it's very calm. So let's, let's it pour also it needs to warm up a little bit. And then we'll warm up a little bit. Yeah. And then um, we'll try that bad boy out. If you hear some romping around, I'm dog sitting this episode. So she's a very, uh, very excited one and a half year old husky, and everything is a play toy at this point. So she's very, very um, going to be pouncing around in the background. Probably she is stoked about this episode. She is very, very excited, as well she should be, because this is going to be an amazing episode. All right, let's pour these up. And then we. Ooh. We will sample here in a minute. Ooh, that's a really nice color. I like the, um, the local king the color. The king's got a very got a nice amberish. Um, I would say it's more of a red. <sighs> Do we need to define what a- color amber is? Well, we've already defined what a couple is, so. Right, so amber falls in the red spectrum. It does, but it's more orange <laughs> than red. This is red. This is This is like... Like if you saw Jurassic Park and they had the mosquito in the amber, it's that. No, it's not. It is. No, it's, it's it is. not even close to that. Uh, my, what color is that? Is that amber? I don't know. What yeah, that's what I It's thought. more raspberry, so, right? It's more raspberry. Exactly. Raspberry is not amber. Raspberry is red. Though. Raspberry, this is pinkish red. It's not pinkish red. Yes, it is. It's much more of a brownish red. <laughs> it's pinkish red. Pink, pinkish red or brownish red? Pink is red. Oh, there we go. Pink yep. is red. Pink is red. Fine. My daughter has uh, has forsaken me. Okay. Um, so this is the... I'm sorry. Let's just um, read the label here. See what it says. 
It's a collaboration brew between May 9th, 2016. Oh, okay. Local King <laughs> is a collaboration brewed May 9th, 2016 by Brickery at Jester King and Local Option yep. at Brickery's uh, Brewery in Sweden. It is a complex and elegant sour ale fermented in oak barrels with house cultures from both Jester King and Brickeryette, raspberries and sea buckthorn. There we go. Was added to the final blend, and it comes in at a nine percent alcohol by volume. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm, surprised. I'm actually shocked that I was thinking to be somewhere around maybe six percent or something. That's um, a heavy duty uh, sour ale. Oh my god, that smells so good. It smells really, really nice. Jeez oh, Louise. Wow, you really get the raspberries off that. I'm yep. not exactly sure what seed buckthorn should smell like, but I'm sure you get that too. <laughs> I've never never tried seed buckthorn um, just raw. I don't know if it's a... Yeah, I don't, I've never it's tried a, I know it's a Scandinavian thing, and thanks yeah. to um, uh, Noma, it's kind of become a, a trendy thing to... Hyped up berry. To do, yeah. Um, but yeah, so cheers. Cheers. Mm. Ooh. Man, that is raspberries with a real kick in the mouth um, sourness that I have to say. I, I find that a lot of times when you get like raspberry um, um, flavored beers, they tend to be extremely dry. This is also very dry. It's but, extremely dry as well, but it's not just like the the spongy just takes away all the, no. the moisture in your mouth dryness. Um, and it also hides the 9% extremely well. Yeah, I don't get... If I hadn't read it with 9%, I would not guess that. I would still guess somewhere I around, would still guess like 5 or 6. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere like 5.5, 5.6, 5. something like that. I think this is uh, one of the best brickery beers that I've ever tried. I have to agree. This is... Amazing, and, and honestly, with the uh, Jester King and local option um, influence there, I mean, it's two two amazing breweries uh, thrown down with uh, one of Sweden's best breweries. Uh, man, that is just. I'm just sad that I'm not going to be able to get a bottle of this because well, they sold that really fast. <laughs> they did. So. I um, I ordered it online, and then when I was in the store the weekend that it came out, they had like one bottle on the shelves left, and yeah. I almost bought it, but I was like, ah, I got it. I just drink it and enjoy it at the time. Well, I'm glad that you got a hold of one because I missed out on it. Mm. I, I completely uh, forgot about the well, sustainable. It, it, it wasn't on their. Um, it didn't come out as a release until like the Thursday before. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. Because they I didn't think announce this one was uh, a little bit delayed. Right. They didn't announce it. I didn't. I read it on um, on on uh, Brick uh, the Facebook page? Instagram. Okay. Where they were like, "Oh, this comes out on on September Blog on our Friday." I'm like, "Yeah, it does," because it wasn't listed anywhere. No, and it got delayed uh, a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. I don't. I can't remember why it was delayed. I think it was the Sustain Blog. It's uh, warehouse thing. policy. Yeah, that's really. It wasn't the policy. I think. I think it was that they Sustain Blog didn't process it mm. fast enough for the for the release or something. Okay. But yeah, I know it was a little bit delayed. So, but this is. Uh, yeah, I. Gotta say, like after the previous brickery at Raspberry Beer, the Brickade Halon, mm -hmm. this is my favorite brickery at beer of all time, probably. Yeah, this is so unbelievably good. I mean, the raspberries just really shine and and come through on this. It's got just a a great tartness to it, but it isn't. Um, it's not overly sour. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't just like. Kill the kill the back of your mouth. Like sometimes no. it's just so acidic on the, in the in the throat that um, uh, it overwhelms you. But I got to say that I really um, uh, really enjoy this beer. Any any more comments you want to make on this? I think we've <laughs> exhausted uh, a lot of comments on this by now. All right. Well, I'm just. You know, I, I think it's, it's really. We're really here good. to review a beer, man. We're not here. We're, I know, here to, I know. we're not here to uh, mess around. No, we're, no. We're. It's, this is serious work. I, I mean, if we don't be. do it, nobody else will. Exactly. Well, someone will, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is uh, no. I think this is. Uh, yeah, as I said, probably my favorite brickery beer of all time. All right. So, what would you what would you rate this? Uh, I would probably go like a four point five on this. Yeah, I gotta agree. I, I think four point five is uh, perfect for this. Yeah. 
I really, really like this beer. And I'm, what makes me sad is that it came and went so fast yeah. that we're not going to see it again. I would have loved trying to uh, let this sit for like a year, mm -hmm. see what happens with it in the yeah. bottle. Yeah. I mean, it, it the cork popped really fast. I mean, it was kind of a surprise. That no, it, no, that was the stout cork. Oh, that was the stout cork. Oh, yeah, this yeah. was a can. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Um, Never mind. It's not a can. It it's is still I a mean, bottle. The bottle, the yeah, the cap is what I meant to say. It's a crown cap. Yes, yes. it was. Um, oh, speaking of, did you see the uh, the post I put on our Facebook page? Uh, the Are you drinking craft beer? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Did you Did you go through? Did you find anything that was a surprise? No. Um, yeah, I. The only thing that surprised me was that Star Promen is owned by Molson Coors. Oh, is it? Yeah. I did not know that. I figured it was owned by somebody, and I just kind of assumed it was Heineken or Carlsberg. Um, or Duvel. No, no. I, I, I assumed it was it was Heineken or, or Carlsberg. Um, because they didn't have Duvel on there. They had Constellation. They had, uh, of course, ABM Bev, Coors, and, uh, Coors Molson. Um, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Heineken, mm -hmm. Carlsberg Group. Uh, and then something out of Florida that I'd never heard of before, and the um, uh, craft beer something association or something like that. What's that one? I don't know. You have to go to look. All right. All right. But um, yeah, it was interesting to to kind of go through and see who owned what. And uh, Asahi was was one of the ones <clears throat> for for Asia. Yeah. But there was um, some pretty interesting breweries there some things i was kind of like oh i didn't know that was owned by someone and um no star bev was not one of them change here, here in the background again as as, as, as usual these days <laughs> the groupie yeah the wannabe yeah yes yes nothing else Molson Coors takes UK distributor Star Promen from Carlsberg. Oh, so oh, Carlsberg did on a one point. All right. So they sold it off. There we go. There we go. It makes sense. It's uh, it's our little researcher in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't see you wave because it's a yeah. podcast where you listen to okay, it. Well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only, the really, the only thing that you could knock this on mm -hmm. would be the high ABV. Now, why would you knock that? Because it doesn't... Well, because then you can't have, like, two bottles of it. Well, by yourself, if you're, I mean. Yeah, well, by yourself, you shouldn't have one bottle. It's a 750... Well, if it's a 5%, like, sour, then you could have a bottle of yourself. That's true. You easily. Could. Yeah. So, you're not going to have that of this one, but... No. It's a really, really small thing to knock it on. Yeah. Because it tastes freaking delicious. It is. It is, quite frankly, uh, one of the best beers I've had in quite a while. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Okay. And moving on. So moving on, we have the collaboration number six. So do we know anything about the first five collaborations? Uh, nope. We do not. But we have our uh, resident little researcher in the background. Yeah, research it. monkey, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you haven't researched this already. Mm. Have this information ready for us. Well, I'm really confused on the... On the nose on this one, because I'm not really sure what to expect. It smells a bit coffee-ish. It's coffee. I get some toffee on it, but I haven't had. Yeah, you can smell it. <laughs> I get your nose. Up. I don't think I haven't had the uh, the tart cherry bourbon barrel quad. Well, I haven't had the sticky monkey or the velvet merkin individually, so I couldn't tell you what they should taste like. Well, like, if, what, if I, what is what that I'm getting off of this? If I remember correctly, the Sticky Monkey is the anniversary barley wine from uh, Firestone. Mm -hmm. And the Velvet Merkin is their Imperial Stout. Um, I think I actually have a Velvet Merkin at home. You do have a Velvet Merkin at home. And that is one of the beers I've, like, on my list of things to try. So if you drink it yeah. without me, I have to uh, kick you in the dick. Just so okay. you know. Yep. Just so you're aware. All right. That sounds fair. All right, so this is 45% uh, Boulevard Bourbon Barrel Quad and 35% but you've had the Walker Sticky Monkey. You've had the Quad, right? And 10% Imperial Stout X Tart Cherry. Oh, there we go. 
Um, I don't know. I might have. I think I brought one of the quads for one of our bottle shares when, like, right when we started to get to know each other. All right. And it's also 10% Velvet Merkin. Yeah. All right. How much was the Sticky Monkey? 25? Sticky Monkey is 35%. 35%. Okay, so it's Boulevard, Bourbon Barrel, Quad, 45%. Sticky Monkey, 35%. Imperial Stout X, Tart Cherry, 10%. And Velvet Merkin, 10%. Nice. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. And this is a jet black... Um, it's not extremely well, black. It's pretty black. There's a little bit of color getting through to the bottom of the glass, but it's not much. Hmm. <laughs> I know, it's taking a moment to process. <laughs> Are you getting the... The effervescence of the Belgian quad in there. Well, you get a little bit of the um, what's the ABV on this? Twelve point five. You uh, get a little bit of alcohol heat. Twelve point five. Yeah, it's, it's got a bit of a boozy, taste. boozy nose to it, but it's really not too boozy at all. No, it's kind of a hard one to place because you do get like the characters from the both from the barley wine and from the from the imperial stouts. Mm -hmm. So you do get like the caramelly notes from the from the barley wine. So you get the one thing I don't get at all is the cherry. Yeah. It was also only like ten percent of yeah, the blend. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost kind of like you didn't really need the cherry. No, I think it would have been better to just like up a little bit of the uh, velvet merkin in there. Yeah, and skip the um, the cherry altogether. Yeah, because that's a it's a whiskey barrel aged uh, cherry on that. Oh, so that might be where you get a little bit of that like peaty kind of smoky character. Yeah, and this, I'm kind of I'm definitely getting that off of there. I'm not getting any of the uh, the tart cherries or the really no. lactic souring off of that. No, as they say, um, I kind of get more of a sourness in the nose. Really? Yeah. It's not just the, the roasted character that you're I don't know. thinking of. Give it a smell. Yeah, maybe. Like slight kind of tart cherry yeah. nose to it. Yeah, yeah, it's very subtle, but as it warms up, it might be um, opening up more like those cherry notes. Yeah, that's very possible. Um, I gotta say, I I had high expectations for this, but it's not exactly giving me the. Exactly giving me the the kick that you wanted. Well, the and I don't find it like the mouthfeel to be all that rewarding. It does feel a little bit thin. Yeah, I think it's still a really nice beer, but mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what like I don't know what it's going for. I don't know what it needs, but I don't feel like it's delivering on really anything. It's a little bit, it's slightly jumbled. Exactly. Yeah. Like it doesn't have. It, it's 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 taking some really great beers and it's blending them together, but it's not bringing out any of the qualities of any of those beers. No. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tough to. Um, to really know like what they wanted to achieve with this, I mean it's 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 a it's a I, good beer. I, I think I think if you were going blind on this and try this, I don't think you would probably like it very much. You don't think? No, because I, I think that if you went in blind on this, and you didn't know what it was. I think you'd be rather harsh on this. Maybe. Um, and I think because we want to give it the benefit of the doubt because of the, the, the caliber of Boulevard and, and Firestone yeah. Walker together. And also like of the caliber of the beers that they actually blend exactly. together. Exactly. You're like, us. this is, this is, should be like, and, and, and to be quite honest, it doesn't, there is no real dominant flavor on anything. It no. doesn't, like you drink it and you're kind of like, well, it's beer, but it doesn't have like the qualities of a quad that I would really want. It doesn't have the qualities of a stout that I want. It doesn't have the qualities of 
Well, the barrels. The barrel, you know, aging that you would want. I mean, it just doesn't... It just doesn't no, it have... Just, it just feels a little bit jumbled. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm... I'm eh, I was hoping for more. Yeah. And uh, I've got a, another bottle of this um, in my closet, so maybe we give it some time and then see yeah, what it becomes. Should, but maybe we should let that bottle sit for like another year. Yeah. Maybe two even. See what happens with it. So we, we can let this we can let this sit for a little while and um, yeah, we can let it warm up a little bit as well. I don't even think warming up is going to help this. Uh, no, I mean, you don't think? no, because we poured this first and it's gotten a little, it's gotten warmer since we've I mean, been here. It's basically up to above serving temperature right yeah. now. So yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. I, I got to admit, I I am too. I had high hopes for this one. But it's still not a bad beer in any way. It's not a bad beer. No, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just, but I just feel like it doesn't have any discernible flavors or characters or because well, you don't it's, get like it's the... sweet, but it's not sweet in a way that I could say, oh, well, there's vanilla or chocolate or no, no. banana esters from the the quad or there's uh, it's just. It's just sweet on my, you know, on my lips and the in the aftertaste. Um, it just itself is kind of kind of dry. Um, it doesn't really give you anything afterward. No. I mean, it, no. it kind of is foamy in the mouth, uh, and then it just. But it doesn't give you like the velvety mouthfeel of an imperial stout that was barrel aged. It doesn't give you the huge intense caramel from the quad. It, yeah. it gives you like a little bit of both. But just not enough to discern it from from yeah. other, well, I wouldn't say other similar beers, but from like the the peaks of its parts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I would probably say I don't. Yeah, I I gotta agree with you. I don't know if this is gonna get better with age. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like a young barley wine. In that with really roasted tones, too. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I should have brought like the velvet merkin as well. We could have tried that after this. Uh, that would have been. I, actually, I would. I would love to try the velvet merkin or the sticky monkey in comparison, just to see what those taste like in comparison. To see uh, maybe yeah. there's something there that that we're missing that um, that we need. Um, but I gotta say, I, I I'm gonna have to be. I hate to do this, but I gotta give this like a, a two point oh, five. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I just think it just doesn't give me anything. Um, there's nothing here that would make me want to get it again. Well, drink enough of it, and you're gonna have it's gonna give you a hangover. Yeah, well, that it will definitely do. It will de all the sugar in this is definitely gonna give me a hangover. Um, oh, from the sugar? Yeah. Well, because the sugar is normally what what you know, high sugar beers will give you a bigger hangover than. Do you know that? I did not know. Yeah. Beers with higher sugar content will give you a bigger hangover than because the sugar gets taken up into your bloodstream a lot quicker. I don't, I don't know what the science is behind that, but I just know that that's a that's a thing. Should we get a research monkey on that? <laughs> no, don't worry about Chandra. <laughs> Do you even know where your phone is? Oh, okay. <laughs> she wanted to go take a poop and then she lost her phone. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay, so uh, I gave this a two point five. What what do you give it? Well, I'm definitely not going to be that harsh on it. Yeah. I was going to go like three point five or three point seven five. Three point seven five. I think you are out of your mind. This is nowhere I near a three point seven five beer. Still think it's a good beer. I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's a horrible beer. But I'm just saying realistically, it doesn't deliver on any aspect. It doesn't have any discernible notes or flavors or characteristics. Well, we both agreed that it had some of the tart cherry notes in the nose. It had a bit of the roastedness and the caramel and the taste of it. So, I mean, it does deliver on what it says, but maybe it doesn't deliver on, like, your expectations of what you thought it was going to do. But it's still not a bad beer. So, I'm, I'm still right there on, like, a 3.5. All right. Fine. What? Hmm. That's what I thought, Chanter. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we're going to do a, a thing over the summer on our Instagram feed. We're going to showcase our beers of the summer. Yes. And we're going to post as many beers as we can over the course of the summer and say, hey, man, these are what you should or should not drink and uh, what we think about them. So check out our Instagram feed, What's on Tap Podcast, uh, all one word on Instagram, and find out what we're drinking this summer Yes, uh, to cool your palate on these hot summer days. Any any beers of summer that you're kind of thinking like this is a go-to summer beer? Well, one of um, well one of the beers that I really enjoy drinking in the summer is um, Mohawk's uh, Low ABV Goza. Yeah, I mean that's one of my like go-to summer beers. So I hope that we see that come back this summer as well. Okay, any any brewery that makes a Goza that you're wanting to? Well, I mean the one that we we're always raving on about is Two L's um, Goza to Hollywood. Goza to Hollywood, yeah, yeah, it's a great that's one. Always a great uh, first quencher. Yeah. I see that. I see the Mohawk, Mohawk has a regular um, Goza release in symbol logit. Oh, did you? Yeah. Nice. Um, so that's definitely one to check out. I know Temple has a lot of um, yep. low ABV stuff that you can find yep. um, in the regular stores sometimes. Uh, some nice Gozas there. I uh, particularly hope to see more uh, Berliner Weiss over the summer. Yeah. I always enjoy that. And um, I gotta say, like after having had a few Berliner Weisses, I, I think it's it's um, come to be not, not one of my favorite styles. Really? Yeah. I still quite enjoy Berliner Weiss. Um, I think a lot of breweries go way too fruit heavy on them. Yeah. It's easy to do. I think I think it's a, a an easy trap. Um, especially McKellar. McKellar releases Berliner Weiss all the time. Yeah. And they the, always go well, crazy McKellar for San heavy. Diego. McKellar San Diego. Yeah. I think they just put out a. Um, they, they just put out a um, dragon fruit. Yeah, fruit face. Mm-hmm. I think they just sent out the email from the um, McKellar, the Danish McKellar web shop yesterday yeah. about it. But I haven't tried any of the fruit face series from McKellar San Diego yet. I think you tried. I've tried a couple of them. Yeah, you tried like. And they've two been of them, okay. Right? They've been okay. Exactly, a couple of them. So two yeah. of them. Yeah. 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 And then, um, I personally, every summer, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'm going to find the Pilsner, and uh, I'm still looking for that Pilsner, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I, for some reason, like, the stuff we get here in Sweden is not very exciting. It's always, it's either kind of like low-grade Polish or or, uh, or Czech or, um, What's the other country we usually get pilsners from? Well, Germany. Germany, yeah, not, uh, yeah, and they're not the most exciting pilsners that we're getting on the market. I'm excited to try the the Bruskeville pilsner from Bruski. Yeah, that would be that would be good. Um, but yeah, I haven't. I always, every summer, I'm kind of like I'm going to find like just the great pilsner, and I'm still looking for the great pilsner. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't haven't quite found it yet. Um, so we'll see if we can find that. Yeah, I, I always try about 10 or 12 of them every summer to see if I can find the one that... Um, the one you want? The one that's going to be like, that's my, my Pilsner. Um, and so far, it's still the classic German styles uh, that I, I found have been the most rewarding. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm hoping to find... Because now we've got like what Tool's doing with their kind of more experimental Pilsner series. Uh, so I'm hoping to see some Swedish breweries kind of pick up that mantle and, and put out some... Well, hopefully we can get some of the um, my sour pills. Yeah, summer. that'd be really nice. Yeah, because you know one of the things that I always find interesting is when we talk to, to brewers, we're always like, "What's your favorite style?" And they always go pilsner. Yeah, but yet it's like you don't see anyone putting out exciting pilsners. Um, uh, so hopefully we'll we'll see more more of those developing as um, as time goes on. Because it yeah. seems like more and more breweries are are starting to come back around to that that style and, and kind of rediscovering it. So I'm hoping well, both that... both rediscovering it and kind of reinventing it in some way. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see some of that um, this summer or, or in the next year. Yeah. Okay, so where can, where can people find us online? Oh, well, you know what, Stefan? Yes. They can find us on uh, what's on tappodcast.com. Yes. They can find us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. What's on Tap Podcast? Yes. On there as well. Instagram, which you uh, mentioned before. Exactly. What's on Tap Podcast in one word. Uh, they can find us on Stitcher. Yes. 
They can find us on uh, Podchaser now as well. Podchaser, exactly. exactly. That's a new um, podcast search engine. And uh, if you do a search on search for us on there, you'll be able to find us. It's in beta right now, but it should be coming out of beta soon. So yeah. hopefully that'll be a nice um, resource for uh, people finding a new podcast. Yeah, hopefully it's going to be a, a good platform for, to um, well find new pods on. Yep, yep. And, uh, of course, they can find us on iTunes as well. Exactly. Um, so until next time, keep drinking. Keep drinking.